Hey guys, and welcome in. If you're new here, my name is Sterling. If you're not, you know this isn't my normal thing. I'm working on learning how to step out of my comfort zone with art. And just like with anything, it's a little scary, uh, intimidating. And I don't like wasting paints or paper. But recently someone said to me, time enjoyed is not time wasted. So I kind of turned that in on my art. Time learning, tools learning, paper spent learning, paint spent learning is not supplies wasted. So I'm trying to see it that way. Today I'm painting in my Etcher sketchbook, the everyday sketchbook I believe it's called, with the white canvas cover. I'm not the biggest fan of this paper for watercolor. It seems to buckle more than I want it to, and the color fades a little bit, but I love it for gouache. There's something about how it really sticks to the surface, and after just one light wash, you can do a lot with it. I'm also using my Hemi gouache and my Polar Flow wa watercolor brushes. Both I purchased on Amazon several years ago, and really haven't put a dent in either one, using them for fun landscapes and projects that uh, I'm not doing so much professionally, but just for fun to loosen up. I like the lack of pressure with gouache. You can bring the light back in, whereas with watercolor, which I have joked with many friends is the chess of the art world. You really have to plot and plan, know where your lights are going to be, and preserve them. With this piece, I tried to be looser, and I end up failing toward the end. I'm much more controlled than I want to be. But this blouse is a good example of what I eventually want to create. Uh, looser art. Art that flows and allows the medium to be a watercolor medium and move just a bit out of where I've put it. I really like to know exactly what something's going to look like the moment I set it down. And painting with watercolor, that's just not realistic and it doesn't lend to the magic of the medium. So I'm trying to learn to loosen up. I have been working toward painting things that I don't already know how to paint so that I can use different techniques and hopefully be able to let go of that control I seem to need in my pieces. I think the blouse was so successful partially because I treated it like watercolor. I allowed it to move when it needed to. Another one of my successes, this time with gouache, was the hair. This hair, for this reference, has so much character and body and movement. And so, trying to illustrate that was a struggle. I tend to use way less opacity than I need to, even with gouache. I tend to be really reserved with my use of pigment. And because of that, I had to go over and over areas that should have been one or two passes just to get the depth that I needed. I'm also working on that. I'm trying to grow as an artist, and so to do so, I try and recognize my shortcomings. I try and see where I can improve, and not being quite so stingy with my pigment would definitely be one for me. I was hoping that buying the Hemi gouache and really having a lot of paint would help that, but I think habits die hard, so I'm working on it. I 
At about this point in the piece, I recognized that to really carve out the hair and create the depth that I needed, the background felt so faded, and so I wanted to go back in with a thicker, less streaky layer of this blush, almost uh, Caucasian blush tone, but with a little something extra, and I wanted to create these kind of white variegated stripes so that we could see the differences in the background, the looseness of it versus the control of the foreground. When I'm painting animals, I normally start with the eyes. I think it's because of all of my practice with animal eyes during Denise Soden's anim 100 Animal Eyes Challenge. That's actually where I got started painting. And I remember seeing my first really significant art successes in that situation. So. When I start a big piece that's a little bit intimidating, I start with an eye because I know that's something I can do well. With humans, I don't seem to have that same compulsion. I start with the larger objects, the bigger shapes, and move to the smaller ones, which I believe is more or less the recommended order of things. and. I just have never done them that way. So I found it really interesting that when approaching humans, I tend to work large to small shapes. So I was wondering if anyone out there, you can comment down below if you have a strange way of approaching one subject versus another. I find that fascinating. As I carve out the eyes here, I'm thinking about depth, setting those back a little bit in the face, and really selling the depth of the iris. I'm trying to create a shadow without making it murky or dark or exaggerated. I find that this is one of the hardest parts of this piece for me. To remind myself that the white of the eye is not white, the iris is never as clear as you think it is, and the outline of the eye needs to be dark but not black. I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but the second eye always takes me longer than the first. I struggle with making sure that it both matches the first eye that I did, but also is receded in the background of the face if it's further away from us. I struggle with all those little details, trying to make it look just right to my brain, and focusing on all of the things that don't look just right. I really enjoy this part of any painting when I get to hop around each section and fix the values. Make something darker here, lighter there. It sells depth and it starts to make me see the overall painting and how it will fit together. What needs to be darker, what needs to be left alone because it's becoming overworked. I enjoy it. It reminds me a little bit of when I used to cross-stitch and I would finish a section 
and then it would call for an outline around that area. And once I did that, it would just look so polished. I think that's how I see any time I go in to add depth to an area and I darken an area for a shadow. It, it feels like I'm carving it out. Uh, Tony Moy, which is one of my favorite watercolor artists, he paints like a sculptor and I would like to figure out how he does it someday. Really figure out how to sculpt areas out of a painting with the depth and darkness. Bring to life the areas you haven't touched just by its proximity to a darker area. I find it fascinating and eventually I will figure it out. As we're nearing the end of this video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you have anything you want me to explain next time, or improve upon, or paint, comment down below, let me know. Uh, I would love to hear from you. I'll leave you guys here, and I hope you enjoy the rest of what's left of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. I would love to see you here again. Thank you so much.